Hello everyone and welcome to Jump Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have an emergency service call for a rooftop unit that controls an elevator mechanical room. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we have a service call for a rooftop unit made by Johnson Controls. And we have a problem here. It's really hot in this room. It's about 77 degrees in this room. And we're like 54 degrees outside, set to cooling. Nothing is working. The only thing I see strange about here is that this is a train thermostat. And the unit is made by Johnson Controls. So it's inside of 77, fan is set to on, when really it should be on auto it's for the cooling. I like it in auto so I know when things are supposed to start. And it says the cool is on, which is weird. I'm gonna put that to auto and click done. Let's go up to the roof. Just made it to the roof. Got a water tower here and this is one sketchy unit, man. Gotta go up this like ladder somebody's uncle made real sketchy but this roof is really cool chris we got to make our way up top put on some gloves when dealing with this so you don't get a splinter just want to show you guys this roof real quick it's a interesting roof look we got a cooling tower here got an 18 ton aon unit here got another aon unit here heating and cooling looks like it's a furnace how many tons? I don't know. We got another cooling tower here. We got another water tower here. The elevator mechanical room that we're working in. We have three elevators and they go up 33 floors. This is a new building and we've been getting a lot of work here. It seems like we're doing good. So real quick, we got to make our way up top. All right. Be careful here. Pass me, uh, pass me a bag. I, I really need to get a rope. You know what? Chris, let's get a rope. Go to the truck, let's get a, that green rope. I'm gonna get started up here. Cause this is sketchy. So it only makes sense this is the unit with a train thermostat. Cause the elevator room is right beneath us. Okay. And the duct looks like it's underneath the unit. So this wire is hanging. Uh, let's see. We actually just worked on one of these recently. A much older one. Where it didn't even become Johnson Controls yet. There's a lot of flies out here. What is this? Like gnats. Jeez. Uh, usually over here we have like our furnace. Right? A burner section. But look, everything's capped. This must be a dual unit. But because it's for elevator mechanical room. Oh my god, there's like a hundred flies here, man. Who died over here? Jeez. Oh my lord, man. Get out of here. Alright, anyways. It's disgusting. I don't know if you I don't know if you guys have seen, but there's literally like 50 flies near me. Anyways. It's possible so it's because elevator mechanical room thing. You don't need heating in there. It's straight uh what is it? <laughs> straight cooling. Okay. It says number four. Humidity sensor. Failure. Number five. Indoor air quality sensor. So number five should probably have five faults. Failure. Oh boy. Let's see if I can get a better look for you guys so it says family number one c1 locked out due to low pressure all right so we gotta check circuit one refrigerant we'll check pressure so it's, that's locked out compressor two is shut down due to low pressure i believe there should be two independent refrigerant circuits in one unit so circuit one and two are shut down on low pressure number three building building pressure what the building pressure sensor failure never heard of that that's a weird one 
supply, humidity, sensor, probably failure. I gotta write this down. Wow, a lot of issues here. How did all that fail? Okay, number five, failure, indoor air temperature, fan only, Jesus. Yeah, it is a sketchy way up here. Anyways, and look at this, I don't, I don't really see protection there. We're gonna rope up the tools. All right, we're gonna pull it up. Uh, this idea don't work good. All right, let's just stand over it so we protect ourselves. Go get the other tool bag. Gonna have to rope it up here. And get everything. Because I'm not going up that sketchy ladder with... <laughs> Good all these tools, man. You gotta check these pressures. Gotta watch out, those are gas lines. Swing it up for me, there we go. All right, come up, use your gloves. Let's see what's going on with this thing. Got the Vito Pro Pack Tech MC. All right, let's see what happens. Looks like there's been some work done in here, look at this. This is our pressure control here, the orange. They changed this control, you see the wires changed. I found this. Oh man. So I can see right here, they cut it, brazed that shut, and they installed this one. And there's garbage in here, so this unit already failed. Man, they don't make anything with quality these days. These guys really left this thing as a mess. Customer booklet all got rained on. But you know what, I'm taking that. That's for me. All right, got some strip. Yeah, here's the box for the old pressure control. Anyways, let's get some gauges. Let's just start it off, but we're not gonna use any hoses because we don't want to lose any refrigerant. That's the way to go. Let's see what's going on here. We got a PT chart here for 410A. At about 55 degrees, we should be equalized at about 156 pounds of pressure. I got my digitals on, man. My field piece thing doesn't open here. I got terrible service. This building is horrible for that, but I got these gauges on and I'm at about 160 pounds on the low side and a bit higher on the high side. I'm like 170 on the high side. So as far as this circuit, which I think is number one, this one's okay. This thing ain't working. Let's get the gauges on the other side as well and let's just see what the standing pressure is. But according to temperature, it seems okay. All right, take that one off. Let's check the next circuit. I believe this one is circuit two. And if that gauge, hopefully the Schrader valve isn't bad. But right now, zero pounds of pressure on the other circuit, my friend. So this thing shut down. There's a refrigerant leak in here. Let's confirm that with this one maybe. Something's up with this one. Oh yeah, zero. Plastic is broken on this side. Let's keep it. You know, we gotta open this up. I got a little bit of broken plastic there. I don't want that getting in the way of things. But right now we're at zero, so that's good. Gauges are reading right. And we'll see what happens. This is a low pressure gauge with this little attachment like that. It's a hoseless connection. Zero, man. This, that circuit is done. So what, our fan is running? Let's see what's going on. This should be our fan. Might be hard to open. From the air okay that's that belt looks actually pretty weak but let's see what's that looking like there's a leak in one of these circuits man and zero pounds of pressure that's bad i got some nitro in the truck but honestly not that much and then we got then what's up with these why did the second one fail we got to see what that is even running you know what we're gonna do this thing is in a hard lockout. Right here is 
little off switch and it looks like a breaker like 45 amps let's let this cool off and turn off and we're gonna reset it and see what's going on and hold on a second what is this look at that there's a wire disconnected here and i know what that red cable is man that's the fire that's the that's the fire guys cable so if there's a fire in the building that's supposed to shut this unit down wonder if there's like an empty terminal there because this is like a female why is that like that that right now that thing is not even being used and that's a problem that's a problem man that is unsafe if there's a fire in the building is going to continue feeding that fire if that fan is on unreal look at that contactor power's off power's off and it didn't fully close if you guys can see it's like slightly plunged in that's weird i'm gonna send you guys a picture while the system is off i'm gonna go and check but look at that man this belt is broken unbelievable let's pull this thing out let's see if i can roll it off well wow. hard to do that is unfortunate oh look it ripped right as i pull that out <laughs> this belt is done man look at this look at all the tears in this belt man this thing is done done it's just it was just a matter of time Ugh, can't open it it almost fully ripped out this belt is done a54 man we don't see any gas lines in here and that's because we got electrical heaters in here all right we got two contactors relay three fuses and these are the heaters in here it is what it is and look at this it's 480 volts three phase this unit's no joke man this unit's no joke yeah 460 460 volts man this, this, this is no joke man and this thing is jacked up that's crazy i know there's a lot of leaks where the pipe enters the coils here got a, got a condenser coil here with the micro channel yo look inside there look how wet it is in there what do you see in there you see that all right yep we might have a leak in the coil we got a crazy wet spot oh man we got some serious problems on this unit all right when you look in here here's a condenser coil on the right is one coil and on the left is another coil so we got two separate condenser coils it looks like this one is done look you see that that's probably an oil stain why is that still showing right it's all dry now it was raining but anyways as far as this one I believe it's one evaporator coil but there's two channels in it so it's two different systems so I'm trying to figure out where all these sensors are um, I look on this board on the top on the top over here it says SAT supply air temperature sensor probably RAT is return air temperature sensor OAT is outdoor air temperature and they all lead this way so I'm like hmm let me get in here I took off this cover Let's get this little mesh filter out. What happened here? All right, let's put that down somewhere safe. And this is the economizer module. Okay, look at that, now we can read it. Nothing's connected here, man. Nothing. What's all this? Oh, this is connected on one side. Well, everything here, it's not. I wonder what's up with that. So we got some sensors coming in here. Oh man, what do they do over here? Okay, so here's the board. If you look up, it's all these connections here. If you look right here is two blue and then two orange. It comes this way. So it's gotta be this right here. Two blue, two orange, supply and return sensor. Let me see, you could probably just, you wanna get a resistance reading on those. There's a, there's a should be a chart for that. We can 
see what that's about, but we can compare them. We pulled out the filters. This thing is jacked up. It is now, we are in 2024. What's today's date? May 1st? Yes. Today's May 1st, 2020. Second. The second? All right, May 2nd. It's all good, 2024. So, geez, a year and 11 months, this thing hasn't been changed. Two years, and look, this thing is black, man. This thing is done. You can see the original color of it was like blue, but look at the color now. The filters are in here. These things are jacked up. Broken belt, Fil uh, you need the filters if you guys can see what we got yeah you can see from there there's a ton of tears all across this belt so we got new filters provided by the building but i wanted to go pick up a belt also got a spare i'm gonna leave in the unit for the future got some leak check let's start with all that also got christian here side up oh it's stuck in there okay he's gonna go ahead and i got a freaking rope up a nitro tank brand new as well we just got that filled up oh man bring it up a little all right bring it close slowly against the wall watch out from there yeah you're good i'll meet you up here man got my manifold set as well first things first we're gonna pull this back pull this back Set this out a little bit. All right, let's start with these filters. Airflow always goes towards the coil. Let's get those in. While Christian finishes with the filters, let's get this belt on. I'm gonna keep that in a separate video as I'm sure you all know how to do that. We got four new filters and a new belt. Let's start with the basics. All right, guys, the filters are in. That's a beautiful thing. Got the nitro open, right? Lefty Lucy. Charge through the high side when the machine is off. Got about 300 PSI on the low side. This gauge is kind of messed up, but I got 225 on the high side. I actually sprayed this a little bit in that area where we saw the oil leak before before anything. We already seen the leak. Look at that. You see that thing bubbling? This coil's done. This coil is done. Spray up this area. Who knows? There could be other areas. But clearly, let's get some light in there. 100% leaking. All right. Kind of figured as much. So whenever you're looking for a leak, use your eyes too and inspect and see if you see anything out of the ordinary that's definitely that whole stain there that's a that's an oil stain and that thing is done this coil needs to be replaced got the tank disconnected with both of these cracked off the back seat so we're open we're releasing the nitro we don't want this pressure switch to close with this thing in the system when we test it <laughs> and then the thing starts with uh, nitrogen inside you're gonna that compression is gonna fail. That's this circuit right here. I guess the last thing we can do as far as uh, this circuit, circuit number two, is check the compressor and make sure that didn't fail. I got this little plastic cover off. Took a picture of where my connections go. Pretty much is this little strap here. You kind of just pull it down and pull that out. So what I want to do is make sure we don't have a faulty compressor too if we're gonna be doing such a big job if they gotta replace this coil i think it's done man honestly so we'll see what's going on we're gonna i got my mega meter here start with one i like to put it at the edge here but there's paint let's let's try it with just copper of the unit itself so we're gonna do a 500 volt test all right let's not touch the unit Okay, 535 volts, we're above 4,000, that's good. Let's let the volt go down. Basically, you're testing one terminal to ground, either to the casing of the motor or the cop pipe connected. 
Next one. All right, we're above 4,000. Let's watch the voltage drop to zero before I take anything out. You're applying 500 volts DC. Okay, looks like the pressure control really did shut you down, so that saves you there. Starting off low, but it builds up about 4,000 mega ohms. You know you're good. For inverter compressors, 100 and below, you're done. And obviously if you're reading nothing, most likely you're grounded below there or it's on its way out the insulation looks pretty good on this so i'm going to give that a pass here's my three wires for the compressor i left this one disconnected just because i already had it off so i did that for a tie wrap nothing's going to happen we don't want that thing starting okay i have my meter on resistance right reads and ohms and we also have continuity Mine does both at the same time. So right now, up here, this cable, the two blue ones is SAT, so supply air temperature. Then the two orange, is it says RAT on the board, which is return air temperature. Then it says OAT, which is outdoor air temperature. Whenever you see those little me meanings, go over here to the legend. So yeah, OAT, outside air temperature wonder if it's like a 10k ohm resistor or whatever but let's see what we got for our supply air temperature just tell me some weird stuff anyways 9.43 kilo ohms the next one return air temperature sensor 8.8 .8. should all be reading the same thing depending but it will it will change depending on where it's at 9.43 about the same it's getting hot too and then the next one is what outside air temperature 8.25 so they're all around the same depending on where the Sun is hitting these things or the heat inside there but they're pretty close we might be able to do a reset I looked actually I found a video on YouTube on how that's done anyways to the right EC1 EC2 EC1, EC2, that's gonna be your evaporator coil, probably in and out. Uh, next up top here, I pulled this out. There's only one wire here, and that's gonna be our RAH, relative air humi uh, humidity. I got OL on it. I wonder if maybe just my meter doesn't read enough, so we gotta take an extra look into that. Then I see some more sensors here, DFS, and then APS. Let's see, APS is air proving. We're probably, that's maybe for, it says optional, but it is there. You know what, air proving? That sounds more like an air proving switch if they had like gas heat. Anyways, and then what else we got? DFS, what's that? D, DFS, dirty air filter. That thing ain't clock, and that thing is not shutting us down, but you never know. These sensors all probably got whacked out with the ones the pressures got messed up, so it messes with all the temperatures, clog air filter. That could be a lot of problems right there. Hmm. Is basically this is our thermostat cable coming from downstairs. What else is connected? Up top, it also uh, powers the board and stuff like that. We have some kind of limit switch. Right, I guess this for heating. Then down here it says fan over, it's jumped, override. Then we got low pressure switch, LPS one, HPS one, high pressure switch. Okay, so these are the four pressure switches. Too low, too high for two circuits. And then here's where the fan is being operated. And I see something, what is that? H1, H2. H1, does it tell me? H1, no, it says HP1-2, that's high pressure. What about H itself? Come on, man. We'll see when the time comes. All right, this one is RAH, relative air humidity. It did mention that it shut down on some kind of humidity sensor. I got this meter hooked up. 
Let's see if we get a reading. The other one just said OL. Yeah, OL on this meter too. I have another meter in the truck. I wonder if that could read it because I know that one has a higher rating, at least more than this. I don't know what this is rated for, but this is the Klein Tools ET600. It's a pretty good tool. Let's turn that off though. I'm just gonna start it up for now and see what's going on. I don't know how many ohms is what. I need to download a manual or what, but for now, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this unit on. see what happens it says Johnson controls JCI okay, it's a little hard to see but there's a countdown now right there 110 109 all right but well, we still have some kind of fault lights turning off the power leaving it off for a little bit and turning it back on should turn you back on but if you really have a problem it's gonna shut you down again also there's a way to erase faults and that's going to be through this little joystick menu here this little black thing here and then up top is enter on the bottom is cancel so let's see what happens after the countdown even with the delays and failures my compressor started 140 back pressure around 275 there also this thing is making crazy noise oh of course look at that is loose just doing that quieted it down one fan is on both fans are on all right that's cool man that's that's something i really want to clear those lockouts though and this cage is rattling like crazy there's a lot of vibration here that's why that coil ruptured and quiet we're gonna have to figure something out there it looks like these screws are all loose and everything oh man it's crazy this this thing is running though even with these sensor failures but i'm gonna go into the lockout i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, erase the lockout codes it's been at least 10 15 minutes and it just says cooling but we do have the errors for that other uh right Number one, due to low pressure, it shut down. Anyways, C1 is plunged in. Supply fan is plunged in. And I gotta see what the condenser fan is. Also, watch out. I made it a lot quieter. I put a couple screws in here. So that's good. So we have one of two fans. Oh no, both fans are actually running. So we're good to go there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna reset those lockout codes. I wonder if those sensors had an issue because of you know the pressure and everything. So this thing is like wacky. But we'll see. We have all those sensors. If anything, they all need to be replaced. So let's see. Come here, Chris. We have like a little right there, a little summary. You watch the video on YouTube, thank God for that, right? Alright, so I'm gonna press over here is our scroll for our joystick top button is enter bottom 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 button is cancel so we're gonna scroll down to summary, summary. all right then we're gonna click, click all right there hold on it's alarm summary click enter make sure I hit that good right and then press down to unit nothing there ah come on we don't have the unit but you know what it says centers uh, sensors let's click that SAT RAT OAT let's see supply air temperature 60 degrees that's cool I go back cancel oh wait return air temperature 73 oh and let's go down operating outside temperature 85.7 degrees i mean it's only like 65 right now but it is hot up here it feels really hot so the sun could be hitting it let's see 
look at that. O P R O A H. Unreliable. Let's try to get that. Unreliable. That thing must be done. Operating. Then they have the operating O A Q outdoor air something unreliable. That's great. So I can't read. And I can't scroll down anymore. So we've got a couple issues here. I guess cancel goes back. How do I how do I clear those lockouts, man? Let's see. Heavy here. View. Results, self-test, details, update, controller, commission, summary, oh, alarms maybe, status, alarms, I'm going to click enter, oh, that's just, I guess, to read the alarms, C2, and uh, cancel. Status. Let's see, it should be just cooling, right? Hold on, over here it shows unit. Let me see the text again. Unit, unit S. Scrolling down. Come on. It's supposed to be summary, then unit. Still got errors, but this unit's running. Hold up. Back pressure's at 140, head pressure at 275. And we got 60 degrees. We're definitely cooling. I, I really want to figure out how to get rid of those lockouts, have it do a reset, and see what's going on. But definitely, we need to change the filter dryer because we have an open circuit. This thing's been sitting to mo in moisture. Plus, we got to take it out anyways. And. We gotta change that coil, the inner coil here. It's been running for quite a while. Anyways, over here's our economizer control. Whenever you're che whenever you're checking like sensors and stuff like that, you wanna confirm that there's 24 volts here rather than the manual as well. Over here we have a common and 24 volts, so three and four. Between three and four. Also, I found this. This thing looked like kind of loose. It looks like it was being pulled. I wonder if that thing is bad here. Anyways, let's check for 24 volts just to confirm. You should be getting voltage. If not, you got a problem. Okay, so real quick, these things got rusty. Try to even get in there. There's a 24. When I go to the common, I don't have the 24 volts, but if I go to ground here, I know I got 24 volts. That right there, 26.9. But now we're showing economizer communication failure. And that wire I found like that was loose. It says that's our SA, SA bus, so it's got to be some sort of communication bus there. There's nothing connected here. And everything's in the back. Might need to reset this thing. Make sure this thing is... Well, make sure this thing is really uh, doing its thing. But this connector itself looks bad. What, I, I, economizer, communication. So that thing must be bad. Failure. Okay. Number two. Right. Circuit two shut down to low pressure. We know that. What we got now? What do we have now? This thing is a whole mess, but it is cooling, so that's a beautiful thing. There's only two codes there it shows now. C2, now our sensors are showing it's fine. It, yeah, it just shows the economized. Look at that, I'm gonna take off my camera. It says, number one, communication failure. On the economizer and it says number two circuit two shut down due to a 
anything that's going to be low pressure. I see something. Does it go out, away after that? Look at that. Now it's cooling. It shows cooling. Interesting. System is still cooling. We're almost at room temperature, but I read in this manual because I'm trying to figure out how to lock out those codes, you know, how to get rid of the lockout. So communication failure. Pretty much that wire I trust the, the harness might be bad. Something is up over there anyways. It also looks all bad. It's the economizer control itself. Everything's rusted up. It really looks bad. Anyways. So what's gonna go what's gonna happen after an hour or two? We're gonna lock out because of low pressure. I got this compressor already here, taped off, right? What I'm thinking is I'm gonna jump out for now, the low pressure control, which is gonna be this guy. I'm thinking if I jump this out, it'll show, show the circuits closed. Even if the contactor pulls in, that's not a big deal because I got the compressor disconnected and like that, we can at least keep one circuit on and this thing is not gonna shut down. Also, I taped off this wire. I told them, man, we gotta get the fire alarm company. You call me when they come in, we come in together. They come in, see what's up with that relay. And then I gotta, I gotta figure out where the connection is here. So, all right. I'm gonna shut this down and jump out that pressure control. And let's see what happens. Okay, cut the two wires with low pressure control and I put them together. I'm just waiting on a wire now. We're gonna jump that out. Because after a while, if it senses that that switch is open, it's gonna shut down everything most likely. Anyways, down here, this is the, I, was, I disconnected the SA bus. Common, negative, positive, and there's definitely something up with that. So when I unplugged it, look at that. Got some green stuff there. What about this? Look at this. Rusted up. That cable is done. It's gonna have to be replaced. Economizer might be good, but if you got a bad communication or a bad economizer, you could also set off those alarms. And we're, you know, everything is being set off right now. So. Since everything, all these connections, I didn't even get a reading on the common here. I had to put it to ground, as you saw. So you can see the 24 volt is there. So something is bad, something's rusted. The thing's been sitting out here for how, God knows how long. Five years, right? <laughs> this building's only five years, so it's gotta be up here for about five years. Anyways, this thing is done, unfortunate. But we're gonna plug that back in. I, what I wanted to do was just make sure that connection's good so we don't get that error as soon as i touched it i got a new error up here so that economizer can cause a lot of problems they might want to change their sensors definitely that wire here this thing this harness we got to figure out where does that exactly go to there's some plastic here that's worn out i can't see nothing that's gonna have to be replaced i'm gonna take a look in here man i think it's full of dust and everything and it's kind of rusted up might be time to change that economizer with the bus also, we gotta change the condenser coil for one circuit. We gotta change the filter dryer. We gotta weigh in a new charger for 10A. We gotta do leak tests. Man, this unit is jacked up for something five years old. As far as this in the manual, as far as uh, it says it on the board. So on this board, if the low pressure switch number two, which is that one, trips three times within one hour it will shut you down so we got to get that jumped out right now with the compressor disconnected so we don't cause any further damage contactor can plunge in con con you know condenser fan whatever it can all run and then that can stay plunged in it's not going to be a problem as long as that compressor is disconnected so three trips within an hour you can run for an hour so you're going to be up here for you know 20 minutes 30 minutes ah everything's good you're going to walk away 30 minutes later you're going to shut down so I think this is the only way to prevent this from shutting down at the moment. So let's jump that out. Let that be. I unplugged it. I try to clean it, but I, I can't get in there really. 
uh, we're gonna try to you know have that connected where I reconnected it everything's nice and tight and flip the switch let's see what happens hopefully this thing can stay on as far as those sensors they do need to be checked but you know what you might as well just replace whatever sensor fillers you're getting man replace that thing you're gonna be all right and from there you'll know more or less what's going on and the economizer is also super rusted you might want to they might want to update that as well if they're having all these problems luckily the compressor is good but man that coil is going to be a huge blow to them let christian come back with that wire nut but man look at that got a nice view of new york city there we're right now in dumbo brooklyn dumbo down under what is it the brooklyn overpass or something like that but yeah that's the entrance over here sheesh we have to come back and make some repairs but let's try to get them going i'm gonna do some more research but i want to find out how to unlock those get rid of those lockouts you know but hey man it's cooling that sounds good to me so right now i just want to have that jumped out reset the unit let that run for over an hour and see if it stays on and we're gonna have to just continue and take things one step at a time there's a lot going on over here Got this unit back on right now. It just shows number one, failure, economizer, communication failure, and it just shows cooling. So we got rid of that low pressure failure, and that's because we jumped it out. It's 117, 118, May 2nd. Let's go to lunch, come back, and let's see what's going on. I dropped the temperature down in that room to 60, so I don't think we're gonna reach that in an hour or so. We just have the communication failure and as we know our communication bus right the s8 bus that thing is rusted like crazy so it can't really get a good communication because it's rusted i don't know man they're probably better off changing this economizer here along with that wire the s8 bus the three the red black and white cable wherever that goes over here probably comes up and that can be throwing everything off so I'm looking at outdoor air humidity it's actually supposed to be connected here it's not even connected they said that if that control is there the only way to reset that is to either change the economizer itself or to update the firmware in here but anyways it's 320, it's been officially two hours. This thing would have tripped. Let's get rid of this tank. Chris, stand on the side for a sec. So this, just in case, it doesn't hit you. Man, you put like 50 knots in this. You don't want this thing to fall, right? All right, gotta watch that gas line. This is dangerous, man. Right at the tip here. No, no, let that be. Hold on to something. Oh, there we go. All right. You got it. <clears throat> All right. Okay, guys. So I'm going to close this back up. But right now, you need to change the economizer with that bus. And that's probably why we're getting all these different sensor issues we're getting sensor issues that are not even connected and they cannot send power so i would recommend replacing the economizer with because it's super rusted in the back I, I don't even get power between that and common which is weird but whatever new economizer the wire here is done with those rusted connections i think it must have got wet or something that thing is done also we have a leaking circuit too so this condenser coil needs to be replaced that thing is done we need to change the filter dryer while we're with it gotta add a new 410a refrigerant for that circuit we're gonna weigh in the charge oh boy also i got the low pressure disconnected for circuit two also the compress uh, i got that jumped out so it's bypassed to keep number one running for the moment and and just in case uh, we got this 
these wires taped off here with the with the wires for the compressor itself disconnected it's been running for two hours it says that you will be tripped if it, in three in three tries if that circuit number two trips three times within like an hour it's gonna shut down the whole unit so we got communication failure on this economizer that's insane and that's because the sa bus is done yep and it is what it is also i gotta call back i gotta call them too this fire alarm this fire alarm man this thing is disconnected i taped it off at least for now but something needs to be done about that but as far as everything else i think we're okay it's gonna be okay in the meantime i'd rather change that before anything oh look at that economizer is doing something it actually opened up a little bit surprisingly we're gonna have to go inside here and tweak the settings here also in the future found dirty air filters we replaced those we found broken belt we replaced that and we left the spare belt on site so we don't have to go pick up a new one next time or just save a trip for the next guy we also fixed this vibration a little bit looks better but yeah man this coil is probably at least ten thousand dollars just off the bat that itself not including labor or anything oh you know, we got chris coming back up here all right man i think it's time to oh kind of might opened all the way still how was that communication thing rusted up and it's still saying we have a communication problem i'm gonna keep an eye on it let me see if communication is the only issue let's start packing up in here man it's a full day just on this unit so it says here number one economizer communication failure yeah maybe it's just the the sa bus harness was is done so that's why you lost the communication because that is the communication cable yep just have one problem here now it's saying economizer and we got the cooling so that cable got to be replaced at that point i would change make sure that this controller is good so i'll get rid of that man doing all these big jobs and this unit's in such poor shape it's a uh, it could use a new one <laughs> so i bet when we change that let's see if we get any errors once we get the pressure back up let's let's you know we're gonna do all the repairs and come back and do a follow-up on this unit let's go ahead and rope everything down you already know jnt mechanical we're gonna wrap this video up here if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time